Coolio. Alright, so we are going to play the Dark Eye, which we tried to play last time and it would not work, but I fixed it. So we should have full videos now. For the wild narrative which I'm about to tell, I neither expect nor ask for belief. It would be mad to expect such a thing, in a case where my own senses reject their evidence. Yet I'm not mad, and I surely do not dream. And it looks like it's not working. Go ahead on in. <laughs> what the fuck? There you are. Oh, here we you go. haven't just come, but it's exceedingly dangerous to traverse the coast this time of day. Wait, let's see if he... I'm so glad you came. I find that the pleasant company of my relations calms my nerves. Heroin? It's not heroin that calms, calms your nerves, William mm -hmm. Burroughs. Careful. I use a special thinner. The fumes can do all sort of damage to you. The painter I knew fairly went mad from it. Glug. I mean, in his defense, most painters oh, yeah. back in the day went mad from it. <laughs> well, from that or from the paint itself? Well, mostly from eating paint, but, you know. Or so, he scratched out his own eyes in a fit of frenzy. His own eyes! Hmm. <laughs> Just watch that you keep the windows open. It's a pastime of mine. By keeping my mind occupied, I attempt to dispel some of the constitutional agitation which afflicts me. <laughs> Couldn't have found a less verbose way to state that. I get antsy, so I paint. I have a surprise. Your brother Henry is here. He's upstairs visiting with the least even now. My brother Henry. His friend Mugwump. <laughs> Starspawn's here. Hey, man. Yeah, man, it's working. go upstairs and find our brother Henry. What a delightful time that was. Cousin, you've come. Oh, we're so happy. Well, dear brother, delighted to see you. Please join us. I feel like cousin, you've come is probably something that Edgar Allan Poe said a lot. Because he fucked his cousin. You think she came, though? Nah. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He did mention his uh, friend who scratched out his own eyes. Henry has just been relating his adventures to me. He's been everywhere. Just like the song. But my travels are over. I'm ready to settle down. Yes. 
How did you find Uncle Edwin? We're worried about him. He is consumed by his paintings. At least he's not shooting his wife. Oh, oh man. Well, you look a little peaked. Cannot touch this piano. Forbidden piano. It, yeah, if you grab the glass, uh, he's saying it takes you to the victim, but the bottle makes you the killer. Okay. Yeah, that's the right music. <laughs> yep, there we go. The agreements are in place. Tomorrow is the day. Chiano, how I've waited for this moment. We'll be rich beyond imagination. <laughs> oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Get for some wine. It's a lovely sauterne. <laughs> Young, straightforward, rather blunt. Drinkable. I want to play this in like oh. VR. <laughs> oh, nice to see you. Nice. Mm, Signore Fortunato, <laughs> I've been waiting for you to call on me at my villa. I've been waiting for your husband to leave town. Shame on you. <laughs> I'd wait till she could scratch on the storm. Nothing like a few welts to remind one of a night of passion. Oh my. Yeah, that was like one of the only things yeah. we got when we first tried to play. <laughs> oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> wonderful costume, Signore Fortunato. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> can I get anything for you? It would be an honor. Anything at all. What's he saying? Don't touch. Yeah, the don't touch the eyes, and if you see your reflection, or you'll switch. Gotcha. <laughs> Oh, nice to see you, nice to see you. That medallion must be worth a thousand florins. You must be cheating me. <laughs> that, that didn't <laughs> work. <laughs> Hey, Amanda. Hey, Amanda.
Oh my. What? Oh, okay. Did she see that too? Yeah. <laughs> that just appeared in the sky. I'd wait till she could scratch on the storm. Nothing like a few welts to remind one of a night of passion. Alright, most of this is just this dude being horny for this lady. Alright, I feel like I'm supposed to go this way, but... I'm having trouble discerning the path. So I apologize this is taking too long. Am I stupid? What am I missing here? Nope. We don't want to look at this lady anymore. Yeah, because I remember last time you... Like, that's the other dude there. Whoa, don't, here we go. Don't touch his eyes. <laughs> Look at that fellow, haunting the shoreline. Chilling. All right, maybe we can go down there now. Yeah, you didn't know that area existed before, maybe. You thought this bridge was all there was. I I don't know, man. What this did Star Spawn really, say? He was just saying, you know, look across the thing and see the dude, but don't touch his eyes. Which, like, they said it right as you did it. switch if you well it looks like you can't even yeah like that's just the opening scene yeah but I didn't know if it would be different since you reactivate it uh, yeah I remember you getting down from here last time but I don't know well see last time I started as um, the narrator uh -huh. the killer so like I was down there to begin with and then I came up here and it progressed the story like, if you go back, it just, like, look at those windows. Yeah. Doesn't, I guess it doesn't fill in. I thought it became unopaque, or it became opaque, my bad. <laughs> huh? Just this. Uh, I know. Because you can't go any further down the bridge past that lady, can you? I don't think so. Direction works. <laughs> like it almost wants me to go that way, but not quite. Like I just don't understand why both directions just make you do a 180. <laughs> I don't know either. Just spin here. Like, there's nothing over there. Like, the dudes right there, and I've commented on him, so I thought the comment would allow me to, like, walk down to him. But it doesn't seem to be the case. And, like, I've exhausted everything that I can do with this guy. Mm -hmm. 
It's just gonna say the same shit. Like, you've done the same thing twice with that lady. So I don't know why it's still letting you... I want to rub this guy's head. <laughs> For good luck. Oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you. I don't know. Talk to the lady again, I guess, if you can't. We won't let you do anything else. Slideshow again. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah, we, we needed to see this again. Like, her ass is out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gonna get banned from Twitch. Oh, hey. Well, we've seen the ass twice. Can we leave the bridge now? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Why are we. Like. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm. Uh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna leave. Is what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna do this. Instead. Revenge means nothing unless the Avenger makes himself known to his victim. I feel like that should have a creaky door sound effect. Like raising the mask? Yeah, because he's of course, doing it so slow. When one takes revenge, one wants to take it slowly. One wants to be avenged at length. must not only punish, but punish with impunity. It is a poor vengeance that also harms the Revenger. Sir? Return to the villa. Tell the livery that I shall be out all night. They are forbidden to leave the house. Yes, sir. Immediately, sir. Hmm, that will ensure their immediate disappearance, now that my back is turned. He has a weakness, this Fortunato. In some regards, he is a man to be respected, and even feared. Still, he has his weaknesses. Can you look at those? Okay. Right. For years, I've suffered his injuries, but now he has ventured upon insult. Like, looking at this guy, I kind of want to put him in a wall, too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who's that? No one, Signora. No one at all. <laughs> oh, we don't get to see her ass if we're uh, if we're the killer. Oh. 
<laughs> oh shit, I turned the wrong way. No. Excuse me, aren't you Montresor? I'm afraid I don't know that gentleman. Will not share his drink with you. What a bastard. Who's that under the mask? Why, it's Montresor. Fortunato. What a surprise. My dear Fortunato, I wonder if you could help me. I've bought a small cask of what passes for a Montillado, but I have my doubts. A Montillado? But I have my doubts. A cast, Montresor, and in the middle of carnival, impossible. I have my doubts. I was foolish enough to pay full price without consulting Fortunato in the matter. Lucchese has a discerning palate. Perhaps he could take a sip. Bah, Lucchese can't tell a Montiero from gutter water. We just have to keep looking back and forth between these dudes? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Go. <laughs> Where? To your vaults. But surely your wife is looking for you. She'll see me soon enough. Let us go. Fortunato has joined the party. <laughs> Soon arrive at the safety of my villa. My early 3D art villa. My friend, this is madness. What is madness? You're the one doing this. <laughs> you are afflicted with a severe cold. The vaults are insufferably damp. They are encrusted with nitre. Let us return. I'll consult Lucchese. The cold is nothing. Lucchese is an ignoramus. This way. Time to get lost down here again. <laughs> Do you have to hand him the torch? I don't know. I guess I take the torch now. Oh, this is like weirdo flesh dungeon. This way. Along here. A 
draft of Medoc will keep us from Yeah, I don't know, the audio and the video seems to be a little fucky still, but it's not as bad as it was. Now he is intoxicated. Come along. What if you just give him alcohol poisoning? Oh shit! He's another person in his eyes. <coughs> Careful through here. Patch that skeleton? I don't think so. Come, we will go back. Your health is precious. You are rich, respected, admired, beloved. You are happy, as I once was. You are a man to be missed. For me, it's no matter. <sighs> cough is nothing, it won't kill me. I won't die of a cough. True, true. So disorienting. Along here. Come along. Therein lies the Amontillado. Like, I don't know what's happening there. Like, it fades off. You gotta grab that chain. What's this? It is very damp here. One last time, let me implore you to return. No? Then I must leave you. But first... <laughs> I hit the bricks with the bones. <laughs> Why don't you just throw a brick at his head? You gotta do this brick by brick. Brick by brick. Talk by tick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good sound clip. You gotta do that every time. I hope so. <laughs> a good joke. An excellent joke. Had many laughs about it at the Palazzo over some wine. The Amontillado. Yes! <laughs> the Amontillado! <laughs> it's getting late. My wife will be looking for me. Let us be gone. Yes. Let us be gone. For the love of God, Montessor! Yes, for the love of God.
Donato. The fool jingled miserably. Like, I feel like in the original story, when he gets to the last brick, he throws the lit torch in. Yeah, the torch was in there when we played as Fortunato. Okay, I just like that part a lot. My heart grows sick. Is that the whole thought, buddy? Okay. It's due to the dampness. Down with the dampness. My heart is damp. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Since I've read any Poe. Yeah, I haven't read The Cask of Amontillado in a long time. Like, I've read... It must have been a dream. A dream dark and disturbing, a haunting dream. I was glad to find myself back in Edwin's silent home. You just step over that table. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Alright, let's see if the painting is here now. No. No. Fuck you. Maybe we have to go talk to Edwin. Very cool painting. It's a portrait of my mother. She died when I was quite young. God rest her soul. I suppose you might say she resembles Elise. Something about the eyes. Where is Elise? She's been spending far too much time with your brother. <clears throat> I'm so glad William Burroughs is in this. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Uh. Oh yeah, he thinks maybe. Yeah. We have to do. Uh, both sides. Both sides of the story. Because, I mean, I, that's probably the painting he's working on there. Yeah, Amanda's describing some nightmarish children's cartoon. With a, with wa a walled up lady. A walled up lady? I can't, I can't think of one. It sounds like the perfect premise for a creepypasta. Yeah. Did anybody ever watch the cartoon with the wall lady? Oh, please read that. Oh, my God. Hope that's not important. Dear Cousin Edwin, due to the afore, uh, the unfortunate prejudices of my employer, employees, I feel <clears throat> myself <laughs> suddenly... Uh... Oh, no. No, I wouldn't bother. Oh, yeah. Oh. There are too many loops, God and damn. it's too small. Did you take that knife? No, I tried. No, you can only interact with those two things. Oh, is this a fish room? Yeah. 
So if you f go into one of those weird nightmare states, you should come interact with this. Yeah, I guess like you're saying, we have to be like in that like dark house state. Uh huh. Which is kind of cool, kind of silent hilly. All right, I don't think I can go any further that way. Uh, <clears throat> there was further upstairs, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. What is Star Spawn saying? Uh, uh, look for the brother and cousin again, and try going into the cellar and look for the edge of the house. Okay. Right. So nobody's in here. Can you play the piano when you're? Your one hand splits into two smaller hands to play the piano. I wish I knew what that song was, but I don't. If you were playing as Chris, you wouldn't be able to play the piano. Mm. It's true. Only Joe can play the piano. And pick locks. She's a jack of all trades. A Jill of all trades. That's just what there is up here. Yeah, it's just like a big, weird room. Um, anyway, yeah, let's go... Oh, there's a door. That's the door to the uh, this place. Oh, my bad, yeah. Did we come down here? Did we just do this? No, okay, there's a bedroom. Go to sleep. I'm glad you've come. I have determined to ask Elise's hand. You just want her hand? I know it's foolish, but my heart pounds so earnestly within. Surely you understand. I fear Edwin will be opposed. He dotes on her so, and he's always been contemptuous of my circumstances. Please, speak well of me to him. It means my whole life. I must speak with her. Bro, your whole outfit is whack. I am not going to speak. That's just how they dressed back then. Dearest Henry, your recent declarations have left me at an extremity of emotion. For my part, your tender affections are gratefully received, but at the same moment I am confused and uncertain. You will forgive me if I spend today alone in the fresh air where I hope to order my thoughts. Hope to order my thoughts on whether or not I should marry my cousin. <laughs> uh oh. That's the same letter. One's the original and one's a copy for, uh... Did I pick it up and move it? I guess so. Whatever. Who the fuck knows? I like this game a whole lot. Like, this is just really... strange. <laughs> fuck. I won't hear of it. I simply won't hear of it. Edwin, please, see reason. She's far too young for you, for any man. Okay, I William Burroughs. <laughs> he's your cousin, for God's sake. What of her wishes? Elise is confined to her room, indefinitely. And you, young man, stay clear of me. Burroughs ain't got no room to talk about who, who should be fucking who. Oh, you freaked out.
Could you touch that painting? No, I tried. Uh, let me just make sure. But I'm fairly sure not. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of places we can maybe go, but I just oh, yeah. want to look back at some stuff. I just wonder if this is a timed thing or if you, you know, you will just eventually. Like, it stays until. I think it stays until you activate a story, yeah. Like, I saw what the stories were, and I know Bernice is one of them, which is Ooh. my, yeah, it's like my favorite Edgar Allan Poe story. I just got a dungeon down here. God, I wish we had a dungeon shit. Could you not? You could. Okay. I, again, uh, there was a torch there. I'm just seeing if you can touch any of them. Whoa! What the fuck? This is what the fuck's up. Her basement has a big window. Yeah, that's kind of weird, isn't it? death had long devastated the country. No pestilence had ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal. The redness of the horror of blood. There were sharp pains and sudden dizziness and then profuse bleeding at the pores. The scarred stains upon the body and especially upon the face of the victim for the past bands, which shut him out from the aid and sympathy of his fellow men. The whole seizure, progress, and termination of the disease were the incidents of half an hour. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious. When his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned to his presence a thousand hale and light-hearted friends from among the knights and dames of his court. And with these retired to the deep seclusion of his castellated abbey. This was an extensive and magnificent structure, the creation of the prince's own eccentric yet august taste. A strong and lofty wall girdled it in. This wall had gates of iron. The courtiers, having entered, brought furnaces and massy hammers and welded the bolts. They resolved to leave means neither of ingress nor egress. To sudden impulses of despair or frenzy from within. The abbey was amply provisioned. With such precautions, the courtiers might bid defiance to contagion. The external world could take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly to grieve or to think. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. There were buffoons, there were improvisatori, there were ballet dancers, there were musicians, there was beauty, there was wine. All these and security were within, without was the Red Death. Just toward the close of the fifth or sixth month of his seclusion, and while the pestilence raised most furiously abroad, that the Prince Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a masked ball of the most unusual magnificence. It was a voluptuous scene, this masquerade. But first, let me tell you of the rooms in which it was held. There were seven. In the middle of each, a tall and narrow Gothic window looked out upon the closed corridor, which pursued the windings of the suite. These windows were of stained glass, whose color varied in accordance with the prevailing hue 
of the decorations of the chamber into which it opened. That at the eastern extremity was hung, for example, in blue, and vividly blue were its windows. The second chamber was purple in its ornaments and tapestry. And here the panes were purple. The third was green throughout, and so were the casements. The fourth was furnished and lighted with orange. The fifth with white, the sixth with violet. The seventh apartment was closely shrouded in black velvet tapestries that hung all over the ceiling and down the walls, falling in heavy folds upon a carpet of the same material and hue. But in this chamber only, the color of the windows failed to correspond with the decoration. The panes here were scarlet, a deep blood color. In the corridors that followed the suite, there stood opposite to each window a heavy tripod bearing a brazier of fire. This projected its rays through the tinted glass and so glaringly illumined the room. And thus were produced a multitude of gaudy and fantastic appearances. But in the western or black chamber, the effect of the firelight that streamed upon the dark hangings through the blood-tinted panes was ghastly in the extreme. And produced so wild a look upon the countenances of those who entered, that there were few of the company bold enough to set foot within its precincts at all. It was in this apartment also that there stood against the western wall a gigantic clock of ebony. Its pendulum swung to and fro with a dull, heavy, monotonous clang. And when the minute hand made the circuit of the face, the hour was to be stricken. There came from the brazen lungs of the clock a sound which was clear and loud and deep and exceedingly musical, but of so peculiar a note and emphasis that at each lapse of an hour, the musicians of the orchestra were constrained to pause in their performance to hearken to the sound. And thus the waltzers perforce ceased their evolutions, and there was a brief disconcert of the whole company. And while the chimes of the clock yet rang, it was observed that the giddiest grew pale, and the more aged and sedate passed their hands over their brows as if in confused reverie or meditation. But when the echoes had fully ceased, a light laughter at once pervaded the assembly. The musicians looked at each other and smiled, as if at their own nervousness and folly, and made whispering vows each to the other that the next chiming of their clock would produce in them no similar emotion. And then, after the lapse of 60 minutes, there came yet another chiming of the clock, and there were the same disconcert and tremulousness and meditation as before. But in spite of these things, it was a magnificent revel. The tastes of the Duke were peculiar. He had a fine eye for color and effects. He disregarded the decor of mere fashion. His plans were bold and fiery, and his conception glowed with barbaric luster. There are some who would have thought him mad. His followers felt that he was not. It was necessary to hear and see and touch him to be sure that he was not. He had directed in great part the embellishments of the seven chambers upon occasion of this great fete. And it was his guiding taste which had given character to the masqueraders. Be sure they were grotesque. There was much glare and glitter and piquancy and phantasm. There were arabesque figures with unsuited limbs and appointments. There were delirious fancies such as the madman fashions. There was much of the beautiful, much of the wanton, much of the bizarre, something of the terrible 
and not a little of that which might have excited disgust. To and fro in the seven chambers there stalked a multitude of dreams, and these, the dreams, right in and about, taking hue from the rooms, and causing the wild music of the orchestra to seem as the echo of their steps. Until at length there commenced the sounding of midnight upon the clock, and then the music ceased as I have told, and the evolutions of the waltzers were quieted, and there was an uneasy cessation of all things as before. But now there were twelve strokes to be sounded by the bell of the clock, and as it happened, perhaps, that more of thought crept with more of time into the meditations of the thoughtful among those who revel. And thus do it happen, perhaps, that before the last echoes of the last chime had utterly sunk into silence, that there were many individuals in the crowd who had found leisure to become aware of the presence of a masked figure. The rumor of the new presence having spread itself whisperingly around, there arose at length from the whole company a buzz or murmur expressive of disapprobation and surprise. Then, finally, of terror, of horror, and of disgust. In an assembly of phantasms such as I have painted, it may well be supposed that no ordinary appearance could have created such sensation. In truth, the masquerade license of the night was nearly unlimited, but the figure in question had out-Heroded Herod and gone beyond the bounds of even the prince's indefinite decorum. There are chords in the hearts of the most reckless which cannot be touched without emotion. Even with the utterly lost, to whom life and death are equally just, there are matters of which no jest can be made. The whole company, indeed, seem now deeply to feel that in the costume and bearing of the stranger, neither wit nor propriety existed. The figure was tall and gaunt and shrouded from head to foot in the habiliments of the grave. The mask which concealed the visage was made so nearly to resemble the countenance of a stiffened corpse that the closest scrutiny must have had difficulty in detecting the cheat. And yet all of this might have been endured, if not approved by the mad revelers around. But the mummer had gone so far as to assume the type of the Red Death. His vesture was dabbled in blood his broad brow with all the features of his face was besprinkled with a scarlet horror. When the eyes of Prince Prospero fell upon this spectral image, which with a slow and solemn movement, as if more fully to sustain its role, stalked to and fro among the waltzers, he was seen to be convulsed with a strong shudder, either of terror or distaste, whereupon his brow reddened with rage, who dares, he demanded harshly of his courtiers who stood near him, who dares insult us with his blasphemous mockery? Seize him and unmask him, that we may know whom we have to hang at sunrise from the battlements. But in the eastern or blue chamber, in which stood the Prince Prospero as he uttered these words, they rang throughout the seven rooms loudly and clearly. For the prince was a bold and robust man, and the music had become hushed at the waving of his hand. At first, as he spoke, there was a slight rushing movement of pale courtiers in the direction of the intruder, who, at the moment, was also near at hand. And now, with deliberate and stately step, made closer approach to the speaker. But from a certain nameless awe with which the mad assumptions of the mummer had inspired the whole party, there were found none who put forth hand to seize him. So that, unimpeded, he passed within a yard of the prince's person. And 
Well, the vast assembly, as if with one impulse, shrank from the centers of the rooms to the walls. He made his way uninterruptedly. But with the same solemn and measured step, through the blue chamber to the purple, through the purple to the green, through the green to the orange, through this again to the white, and even thence to the violet, very decided movement had been made to arrest him. It was then, however, that the Prince Prospero, maddening with rage and the shame of his own momentary cowardice, rushed hurriedly through the six chambers, while none followed him on account of a deadly terror that had seized upon all. Bore aloft a drawn dagger, and had approached in rapid impetuosity to within three or four feet of the retreating figure. When the latter, having attained the extremity of the velvet apartment, turned suddenly and confronted his pursuer. There was a sharp cry, and the dagger dropped gleaming upon the sable carpet, upon which Instantly afterwards fell prostrate in death the Prince Prospero. Then, summoning the wild courage of despair, a throng of the revelers at once threw themselves into the black apartment, and seizing the mummer, whose tall figure stood erect and motionless within the shadow of the ebony clock, gasped in unutterable horror at finding the grave ceremonies and the corpse-like mask which they held with so violent a rudeness, untenanted by any tangible form. Now was acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. He had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers in the blood-bedewed halls of their revel, and died each in the despairing posture of his fall. The light of the ebony clock went out with the last of the game, and the flames of the tripods expired, and darkness and decay and the red death held illimitable dominion over all. So I didn't expect uh, an entire reading of The Mask of the Red Death, but that's pretty fucking cool, I guess. They could have cut that time in half and just shown these images, but played Beneath the Mask by Bell Witch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to do that again, is it? <laughs> Shit. Encore. Okay. Like, I guess you can't approach that for anything. What the fuck? That's kind of wild that they put an entire reading in, but that's cool, I guess. I guess the description of the palace was too elaborate. They're just like, we don't really want to yeah, like program it would, any of that. It would be a pretty large, like, elaborate... You're still in this... Well, I don't know if that's basement or... Uh... No, I can hear the whispers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know, so. but... Okay, you are still inverted out here, yeah. so... Oh, look, it's added this painting now. It's just not finished. Yeah, so it's not that's finished. How it's so to look or... I think I think it must complete it once. Fuck, once you do both sides. Uh, Did it add? Yeah, look, it added a full Red Death painting. So that art was really cool because uh -huh. it's like stained glass and shit. Like that was really cool. That's my second favorite post story. Oh, I've been trying to think of what mine is, and it's the facts in the case of M. Valdemar. Duh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, fish. Yeah, I'm gonna go find that fish. It's in the percolator, I've heard tell. There's a fish in the percolator. <laughs> because
Become fish. Become fish. Yeah, Amanda says there's a reading of Annabelle Lee as well. Ooh. That was a real fucked up face you missed. Oh, is this the Telltale Heart? Fearful shock followed hard upon grief Tuesday last for Mr. Theodore Sharper Shepperton. Citizens of the borough of Manhattan commiserated with Mr. Shaperton over the death of his sister, Miss Emily Shaperton, at her funeral of that day, upon opening the family vault, a sight greeted the mourners of such frightful nature that it scarcely bears relating. Mr. Shaperton's wife, Mrs. Julia Emerson Shaperton, died, or so it was presumed, some three years ago. However, when Mr. Shaperton opened the door to the vault, some white appareled object fell rattling into his arms. It was the skeletal remains of his wife in her yet unmolded shroud. A careful investigation renders it evident that she must have revived some short time after her entombment, and that her struggles within the coffin had caused it to fall from a ledge to the floor where it was broken as to permit her escape. On the uppermost of the steps which led down into the dread chamber was a large fragment of the coffin, with which it seems she endeavored to arrest attention by striking the iron door. While thus occupied, she probably swooned or possibly died through sheer terror, and in falling her shroud became entangled in some ironwork, which projected interiorly. Thus she remained, and thus she rotted erect." <laughs> Beautiful. Eat the cheese. I tried. I can't pick it up. You got a stew going over I there. I do have a stew going over here, though. We're going to check that out. I love a stew. Oh, I can't access the stew! Tea, coffee. Oh, oh, we got a bowl. Does that... Oh, stew time. shit, it's time for stew. I want cheese with my stew, goddammit! You have the same arm no matter who you are. This is the game. Stew eating simulator. Unlimited stew. Unlimited! <laughs> You're stuck in a stew loop. <laughs> Classic mistake. Are you waiting for the chat to empty completely? <laughs> no, I'm waiting for the Xbox achievement I'm gonna get for eating enough stew. <laughs> Yeah, we're emulating this on an Xbox. <laughs> this game is fantastic. I'm so glad I got it to work. Unlimited stew should be a comfy synth project. You are absolutely correct. It's late for him to still be out. He's a strange young man. A strange young man indeed. And just in here reading about Cyclops. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, 
Okay. <laughs> That's ye old pornography. <laughs> ye old pornography. Oh, see that? The light go out? Yeah. Peculiar. What we got in here? Got some coins? back. Explore some more before I get murdered and have my heart cut out, I guess. Oh shit! Too late. This motherfucker. Oh, good evening. Oh, good evening. I think I probably fucked up because, like. Yeah, I didn't think it was letting you go to his room before. His one yeah, I guess it's it. not. It's like it just kept turning into the pointing finger. Who the fuck? That was a cop. Fuck the police. He can't talk to this dude anymore. I think I just have to be in front of him, probably. Is something troubling you? Of course not. No, I want to eat more. Really make this motherfucker hate you. <laughs> Listen to you eat. Stew eating tech needs to be implemented in more games. Star Spawn says offer him soup. Oh. Can you stand with your soup? I don't know. Maybe I need to get him a bowl. Just ladle it directly into his mouth. Ooh. You set it back down. Oh, yeah. I guess I did. He says he knows that if you are playing as the killer, the narrator offers you soup, but maybe you hmm. can't actually. Can I feed it to him? No. Only Obviously yourself. not. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my favorite part of the game so far is uh, eating soup. <laughs> it made me remember that Boardwalk Empire joke, though. <laughs> <laughs> the one about everybody at the table uh-huh care for some supper oh here you go no thank you very much he's rubbing his hands together evilly yeah. we're looking at you motherfucker oh well Look at him. Oh, he wants to kill me so bad. I say, 
joke, but I think that was actually like a parable or some shit. I mean, it was a parable, but like, <laughs> it was it stupid. Turned into a joke. Uh, let me see if I can use the door because it looks like I can. Oh wait, fuck. Oh, yeah, no. like it turns opaque yeah. right before it starts turning into a pointing finger. So you think you can, but then you can't. I'm going to bed now. Hope nobody comes and murders me. I am so very full of stew. <laughs> oh, no. Can you sit in the armchair? I don't think so. No. Start on saying, look at the clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that'll work so I can go to sleep then. My, it's getting late. <sighs> Gonna fucking fall into a stew coma. Maybe just... I mean, he's about to die. He deserves a little <laughs> more stew. Come on. Last cheat day on Earth. <laughs> it's like the worst Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> Good night. Sleep well, old friend. Wait, let's get a little more of that. Oh, no music this time. Oh, the music went away. Fuck. You ate too much stew, you don't hear music anymore. Maybe this is not my room. Well, you couldn't get into the other one. I can't get out of this one now. <laughs> So I guess it is my room. Fuck. Escape the room. God, I would totally play some Escape the Room games. I love Escape the Room games. I'm bad at them, but I love them. Maybe you can open another drawer and you've got a stupid little uh, sleeping gown and nightcap. Maybe I've got some got some more stew somewhere. Damn it. I feel like an idiot because it's like, I feel like it should be obvious what I need to click. Maybe you gotta read some more. Gotta know. Oh, yeah, gotta put and out God the fucking... God forbid you uh, go to sleep with a candle burning. Well, I mean, in his in his defense, you could die. Uh, it was... <laughs> mm. Oh, Oh, yeah? Oh. Are you choosing a dream? I think so. Oh, here we go. There you go. <gasps> what? <gasps> Who's there? What could it be? Someone? Who? <sighs> Nothing. The, the, the wind in, in the chimney. A mouse. It must have been a, a cricket. Yes, a cricket made a, a single chirp. 
Why wouldn't you assume that it's the fucking guy you live with? Yeah, I guess you gotta... <laughs> he died as he lived, full of stew. That's correct. Whenever you freak out, you can come back and touch the knife and play as the other dude. Yeah. Fuck! So can you go to the cellar as, uh, like, not freaked out and see if it's any different? I think you can. Um, and I will do that. <laughs> the man's family name has been dishonored. What's to be done? Your brother has dishonored your name. Seducing his cousin still in her minority. Once the dread mark is made, it cannot be struck out. We avoid complete disgrace only by taking immediate action. <laughs> immediate <laughs> action. We are getting too close to old William Burroughs here. He is going to touch that, our penis. <laughs> the painting is different. I've confined Elise to her rooms. You are not there to <laughs> communicate in any way. What's communicate? Is that where you eat the wafer? Yes. We won't feed her any wafers. There's also a painting on the wall behind him. Was that there to begin with? No. Oh, that's a new painting. My bad. I, I can't, like, access it. Right <laughs> I keep thinking that's a bong. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. That'd be fucking sick, dude. See, so does he want me to kill my brother? I think he wants me to kill my brother. I wish I could take this knife. I would go fucking kill him for wearing those whack-ass pants. Yeah, let's pop down back here. I don't think you can access anything in the cellar when it's normal. Had bad dreams last night, did you? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can go in here, I guess. Huh. Can you not go in there? No. Is there a torch on the wall you can take, maybe? Maybe it won't let you because it's too dark. Can't take that one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think you can do anything in here right now. Fuck. Never leaving you. This dude's voice is like bass boosted. <laughs> oh, 
I guess he's done talking. So, do you know which room is hers? I guess it's that bedroom we went into that wasn't occupied. Uh, possibly. Well, somebody's in there playing the piano. Oh, cousin. Uncle Edwin has become very angry. He's he's forbidden me from even speaking to Henry. Render me a service, won't you? Will you please, please take this note to Henry? You mustn't tell Uncle. I shall be forever grateful. I feel much better. Here, you play. I'll sing. Please? Come on, please, keep playing. Shit. Come on. playing this piano you're just like man I could go for some stew what's up with that <laughs> uh oh oh my what the fuck blood you got, yeah, uh, yeah you got the consumption so you can touch the glass and try to be Fortunato again or you can go touch the knife maybe Fuck. Oh, I was gonna see if I could play the piano in Nightmare World. I wanna go up here. Oh yeah, it might be worth seeing if there's anything up there you can do. Not a damn thing. Um, yeah, have you been to that door? Turn back around that door right there, straight across. Yeah, I don't know. Let me let me see. So, this is where I talked to Henry before, right? Yeah, okay. Because then these rooms that's the two bedrooms and this is the room with the piano so you haven't been back there have you no you're right interesting what the fuck <laughs> I wonder if this is like the edge of the house that star spawn was talking about There's nothing interactable right there, is there? I don't know. Um, I guess not. Interesting, interesting. Why do we have these hallways we can't walk to? I don't know. It's really odd. That's really cool art. 
Yeah, you can't even really look at the painting, at the pictures on the wall back there. Mm -mm. What's that room? Is that the office? Yeah, that's his little okay. office area. There's a bird cage in here. Yeah, which I assumed you could interact with. But Yeah, here we oh, go. Okay. Like I figured this would be some story. You look like shit, buddy. <laughs> oh, my dearest. E e oh, my dearest Agaeus, I am waiting. I am writing this note because I have not the courage to speak to you directly. I harbor such deep emotions con concerning yourself, and I find I can no longer hold them. Look in to see if you're feeling something better. Yes. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Yes, miss. Spill something? No, it's a embroidery hoop. Oh. Yeah, it's this easy. <laughs> Very fast. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to make a comment about that. <laughs> Yeah, you're sick. You have to be conf confined. It's true. To Helen, Helen, thy beauty is to me like those Nicene ba barks of yore. Or is that supposed to be banks of yore? Don't know. That gently o'er a perfumed sea, the weary, wayworn wanderer bore to his own native shore. On desperate seas long wont to roam, Thy hyacinth hair, thy classic face, thy naiad airs have brought me home to the glory that was Greece and the grandeur that was Rome. Lo, in yon brilliant window niche, how statue-like I see thee stand, the agate lamp within thy hand, a psyche from the regions which are holy land. Oh, oh sick. Ooh, laudanum. If you feel dizzy, you must take a swallow of this. It will help you to get a seizure. Also, I must counsel bed rest. Try to stay in as much as possible. <laughs> Ooh, sipping. Can I, can I, can I, I, you can't consume this like you can consume the stew. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're a coward. Not if you're a coward. Oh, shit. Dear Emily, at long last, spring has come. Doctor says I am not to go out. He gives careful instructions for me every... For my every... For my every exertion. This I find particularly dismaying. I keenly miss the days of my exuberant youth. 
cousin Igeus continues to treat me with perfect kindness and generosity because he wants to fuck me, it must be difficult for him to maintain an invalid for so long. He himself offers... N suffers an affliction of the nerves and the strain of providing for me cannot be a small matter to him. He has been my closest companion all my life and I feel such affection for him that the slight act of writing his name can cause tears to fall. Your loving friend, Bernice. But yeah, this is definitely my favorite Edgar Allan Poe story because it has, like, some of his best uh, atmosphere, in my opinion. Like, it's got a similar atmosphere to H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's the, Strain or, uh, the Outsider, which is my favorite Lovecraft story. Can you walk around the bed and interact with this uh, pitcher? This basin and pitcher? Probably. God damn it. It's just the only other thing you haven't really gotten close to. No. Oh yeah, that gets you in the bed, my bad. can't have any of this tea. Can you interact with that book? Uh, I did. Oh yeah, that's right. Hell. I'm sorry. Embroider anymore? Oh, you have a different arm in this one. They put some frills on it. The bird call changed. For a split second there. I feel like I should be able to interact with this wardrobe, but I can't. You're supposed to hide in it when a monster comes in. True. When your cousin comes in. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, we have other white linens. I have no daughters of my own. I hope you'll wear this, my wedding dress, when that happy day arrives for you. <laughs> I opened the chest, can I leave my room now? Can you look at the birdcage from this angle and interact with it? No. No, you just walk right past it.
Like, there seems to be only the one thing in here. Yeah. Like, you can't move it. You just take it out and put it back. Can I take more laudanum? No. do nothing can't even eat stew like what <laughs> maybe that's the point it's supposed to actually make you feel how fucking boring it would be to be trapped in your room before internet existed here like I'm just scanning each uh, scene <laughs> see if there's anything I haven't interacted with like I feel like the birdcage is a movie it is a movie with Robin Williams um, and here too like there's there's just nothing here. It's just a window that does nothing. Give me the bird. Yeah, Star Spawn says you should be able to leave the room. Computer says no. <laughs> What's happened? What have I done? Soft locked us into uh, <laughs> the story. looking it up yeah I'm gonna look it up I mean I'm sure he is too but like I mean I'm not seeing anything you haven't interacted with like to me it looked like you clicked everything that could be clicked It says, walk toward the fireplace and then turn left. Wait. Wait, no. I'm, I'm reading the wrong way here. Get the new turn around, go to the chest, open it, wedding dress, close the trunk, writing desk, take the book, read the flower that is revealed. 
Take a photograph and return it. Leave a letter to put the pen and sign it. Money, but they mustn't go towards the door. When you reach the door, turn the light towards the bed. They hear a knock. So you're made and head out of your room downstairs to the right. So were you supposed to take something out of that book? Uh, let's see. I'm kind of afraid that. Hang on. Yep. Ugh, is that your cousin? <laughs> Gross. Like, I think that must have been it. So let's see. Yep. <laughs> Had to get all horned up for my cousin first. I got one in those invisible pet fences, so you can't go out the front door. Yeah. Can't even fucking approach it. This room. Come for a stroll. He seems miles from here. Are you all right? I'm sorry. Berenice, will you marry me? Aegeus. Oh, Aegeus. Of course I will. I. Why do you use the force on her? Fetch the doctor. What'd you say? I said, why do you use the force on her? The force choked her. <laughs> Man, this has been rough in the 1800s when you asked a woman to marry her and there was like a 50 50 chance she just dropped dead. Mm -hmm. That's it? <laughs> That's all you had to say? Can I take more laudanum now? He's made me very happy. No, the laudanum has made you very happy. The happy day will soon be upon us. I'm certain Doctor would say all this excitement is not good for me, but I haven't felt so well in years upon years. I am concerned about... It I guess his name is Ajaeus, is how she pronounced it. Uh, he continues to be as bookish as ever, but he is often distracted and distant. I feel certain once our marriage vows are taken, he will adjust, as I will, to the unusual state of being happy. I do hope you can come to the wedding. I know it is a long journey, but it would be the final touch to a day of complete joy. Please come see us, your loving friend. Your, your loving friend? Look, your loving friend. Firmly grasp it. <laughs> Bernice. <laughs> Laudanum? No? Okay. <laughs>
He's so distant. I hope he's all right. Aegeus? Huh? I'm sorry to distract you. I wanted to tell you, Cook's chosen duck for the wedding feast. <laughs> you know he loves you when he looks at you and his eyes jingle. <laughs> oh, he's doing a little dance. Okay. <laughs> Darling? It's his duck dance. Oh, you're occupied. <laughs> oh, you're, you're occupied practicing those dank moves. That's that painting uh, that uh, Burroughs was painting yeah. when he first came in. Ooh. What's going on over here? In this area? Oh, oh, he's still, he's still at it over there. Oh, that's delightful. A cheese doesn't look well at all. <laughs> this room doesn't look well. Uh-uh. Oh, I guess I'm not Perhaps well. I get the doctor. I'm not well either. I must get my medicine. I tried to take medicine before. My medicine. Oh, yeah. My no! Medicine. Oh! You gotta slurp it up off the table. Too late. What's to be done? Oh shit! No. 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 That's no. not. You got a one-inch punch your way out. What have they done? Help! Help! Let me out! Like, if this could turn into Kill Bill, that would be pretty sick. Thank God. Nah, bro. I just want them teeth. <laughs> I really like how this is presented from both perspectives, because, like, from the, the victim's perspective, it's, like, totally absurd. Like, uh -huh. there's you have no idea, like, what's going on or why. You need to get that letter to, uh... Henry. Oh, look. <laughs> I gotta... I gotta go find Henry. But he might be up in his room. Fuck. Yeah, everybody disappears when you go into... Nightmare mode. Ugh. <sighs> What a weird thing.
Okay. I think, yeah, I think his is the other one. <laughs> Any news from Elise? Anything at all? Oh, do you have to go get it off the piano? I don't know. I thought I picked it up. But maybe I do. Let me see. Yep. You could have read it. Oh, I guess I should. Uh, my darling, I'm confused and frightened. Your declaration came so unexpectedly, and Uncle is right w is right when he says that that I'm far too young to entertain proposals of marriage. The two men who mean the most to me are in opposition. I fear that. I fear the result will be for Uncle to send you far, far away, and I shall never see you again. If so, please, please remember me always. Nosy. Hmm? Read that girl's love letter. I did. <laughs> Alright, first of all, <laughs> she trying to fuck her cousin. From Elise? Yeah. You give him time. Wait! I need your help. Edwin has become completely unbalanced. He's violently angry. He even refuses to call for a doctor, claiming her condition is due to my unnatural advances. We must conspire against him. We must take Elise from this dark place. You, my brother, <laughs> you oh. must help me. <laughs> The mistress Elise is no more. She is dead. <laughs> oh, word? <laughs> well, fuck, dude. What'd you think about that? That was fast. <laughs> you ain't got no thoughts? Okay. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Like, that's her room. I assume she's... Yeah. Take a look. What up, Billy? It's my fault. All my fault. I loved her as I've never loved. I refused to believe she was ill. My mother, my dear, dear mother, died in much the same way. You must guard the secret of Henry's proposal. It only blackens her memory that she should die under indecent circumstances. Cousin, there was nothing indecent about my affection. Surely my grief compares with yours. Please leave me to grieve properly. Why'd you uncover her again? I ask only that you allow me to sit vigil just until dawn. Yes. It would be proper. <laughs> Think Your about corpse antics. Will need light. Go fetch the ladder and I was filling in my study. Oh, the bong? Can you go in the basement now? I don't know. Let's try. Just for shits and giggles. You watch yourself. Okay.
like you're right at the door, but you can't go through, and it looks like it's just an open. Why can you get so close to this wall? <laughs> I don't know. There's obviously something we're supposed to do there, but it'll probably be later. Set it here. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Trying to figure out how to get back downstairs. Oh, I meant to go look at the... Uh... Still the same as the first time you came in, it looks like. No. Oh, okay. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea. Yeah. A maiden there lived, whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabel Lee. With a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in the kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud, chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee. So that her high-born kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea could ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, in the sepulchre there by the sea. 
in her tomb by the sounding sea. So that was like a total reading of Annabelle Lee, so that's pretty cool too. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the cellar again and just see if I can go into that area. Okay, yeah, so if you go down here now, it automatically turns into this area, so I guess you can't go any further, actually. Never mind. So we've got an Annabelle Lee painting, we've got a Bernice painting, we've got a Cask of Amontillado painting, we've got Mask of the Red Death, and we've got uh, the Telltale Heart. So those paintings are full. So obviously there are a couple of stories where we can go back and do different parts. Uh, I want to see how much of this thing is filled up. So, I'm assuming maybe these three parts that aren't filled up are the alternate stories. Oh shit, did I just fuck up? Shit, what happened? Uh-oh. Okay, no. We're 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 good. We're good. We've got a knife. So that's Bernice. Dear Dr. Reynolds, time she falls into another of her trances, she emerges ever more stricken and ever less the happy cousins remember from the ship. Young man, our lineage has stood honorably for centuries. Her steady decline. Her steady decline.
so I was, uh, I went back to the, the, um, the office by the studio Mm -hmm. and I could activate the knife and like you see your reflection in the knife and I guess that takes you into the Ajaeus side of the Bernie story. Oh, I figured it would be, um... For long oh, well, it's in the same room with the birdcage. Yeah, that makes with sense. With my attention riveted to some frivolous device in the margin of a book. She's almost gone. Um. What's up? Okay, there it is. It didn't look like it was... Even though I can hear the sound, it didn't seem to say it was capturing it. So I was worried we were having a problem there. Yeah, have you looked at the fireplace? Yeah, Okay. you just sort of warm your hands and think about Bernice. <laughs> that seems to be all you're doing here. That letter is written now. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Like, you started to write it, but you didn't finish it in the scene. Um, I'm much concerned about Bernice each time she falls into another of her trances. She emerges ever more stricken and ever less the happy cousin I remember from my youth. The medications you recommended no longer seem to have any effect. I wonder if you could visit us and uh, something to reverse her steady decline. Labor to reverse her... And labor to reverse her steady decline. As for me, I find I am near nearly unable to leave the gray gloom of my cherished library. Uh, My propensity for... God, I feel like an idiot trying to read It's really hard. It's just all cramped together and... My propensity for prolonged fascination with objects of no genuine interest still afflict me from time to time. Same. Uh, (laughs) I will muse for long unswove something hours. Unmeasured, maybe? Unmeasured hours. With my attention uh, my attention something to something Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
uh, devices in the margin of a book. Um, I stare at shit too long. I probably have undiagnosed ADHD or something. Um, uh, <laughs> Can you give me some fucking morphine? <laughs> <laughs> give me some goddamn laudanum already. I'm sorry each time I write to uh, something you will all... Okay, I'm going to sign this now. <laughs> Co-signed, because that was some real shit you just said. Yours, Aegeus Pointed. Come in. Cousin, you never leave this room. Come with me for a stroll. What do these Her things? eyes have grown lusterless. Each year's look after Berenice. Each year's, are you all right? Look after Berenice. She has loved me long. Her eyes have grown lusterless. Even in the days of her beauty, I never loved her, yet she has loved me long. Each years. Something's fucked up here. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about how her nose casts a perfect Hitler stash on her face. It really does. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Faded. Help someone! Who should Berenice we help? Has fallen. No, I'm all right. It's past. Come, miss, you've taken another of your turns. Trances. I have never loved her. Ever less the happy cousin I remember from my youth. Wish Vaporwave played when you inspected that bust. Yeah. Her eyes have grown lusterless. Her eyes have grown lusterless, did you know? Mustardless. Mustardless. I can't activate this painting. Like, I already did this one in the previous scene. Perhaps we should marry. I'm trapped. Nope, nope, still not time to leave. 
like how you can't examine the bookshelves. Yeah. Young man, our lineage has stood honorably for centuries. Their steady decline. Like it looked like you. Whoa, whoa! I'm quite overcome. She's overcome. Done with it. Oh shit! <laughs> Stu said, "No, nah, I'm gonna stay in here and go crazy. It's fine." <laughs> To be fair, this is kind of how it feels. You walk around doing nothing and a whole fucking day passes. Oh. Oh, word. Cheers. I'll drink to that, bro. Like, I assume you're trying to interact with this hallucination, but there's nothing to do. Yeah, yeah, like, the, the hallucinations just sort of, like, are there. <laughs> you can't do anything with them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, I wish that wasn't so funny. I wonder if it's running at the wrong speed for some reason. Or if it does just look like that. I mean, this is very much in the style of the story because, like, th the narrator is sort of in a feverish state through the whole thing and, like, time passes in a really weird way. Another of her trances.
each year. Yeah, that's always the same. Uh huh. Look after Berenice. All right, I've still got this <laughs> thing pulled up because, like, once again, I do not know what I'm doing, so. Let's reference that. Yeah, it's just super, super repetitive. <laughs> With no apparent result. Mm. What? Shit. Fuck. I need to go back here? Wait, no, not there. Have you ever tried? Me, young man. It says you have to do it twice. Oh. She's almost gone. Okay, so like she said two different things, or that one has said two different things now. Okay, I guess that's not all there. <laughs> you must hallucinate in every part of your room. Alright, we've done that. We've done this twice. Quickly, young man. Okay, now I'll go to the middle of the room and look at the door. I'm looking at the door. From here? Come in. There we go. <laughs> you have to be in the exact right spot. Oh, God. Dearest Aegeus, the day is soon upon us. No, oh, fuck! Oh, rub them teeth. <laughs> Whoa, um, what the f Oh, there's teeth. Teeth. <laughs> we have the teeth, though. Nine Inch Nails reference. Yes. Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh, it's serious. Oh, God, look at this shit. <laughs> Quit laughing, it's not funny. Yes, yes, <laughs> we face apped all of these photos. It's almost gone. Teeth. Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Smile Dog was here. Oh, oh what? The st oh, the statue! Wait, no, it does have teeth back there, doesn't it? Hang on. Oh, fuck! Look at that shit! Teeth. Oh, this is awesome. Teeth. 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 It is only by way of the teeth. Teeth. That I can restore myself to peace and to reason. Yeah, I think that tracks. <laughs> that makes sense. Why not? I mean, m you know, science and medicine ain't too concrete right now. It's good to try as any. <laughs> Just 
Teeth? Teeth? Those who were my friends told me that by visiting the grave of my beloved, I might in some way alleviate my misery. Did they say to take her teeth? You know who my favorite Final Fantasy character is? Who? Teetha Lockhart. Teetha Lockhart. You know my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh character? Which favorite Yu-Gi-Oh character? Bandit Teeth. Who? Bandit Teeth. Oh, Bandit, Teeth. Bandit Keith. Okay. <laughs> you got any more? I'm trying to think of some. So, like, now I guess it's... Yeah, so it's filled out another one of those. So there are two stories we haven't even seen? Or... No, there okay. are two halves to stories okay. we haven't seen yet. I didn't know if that was how it worked or not. Yeah, apparently it is. How's it going? Still dead? They got the goddamn coffin on the bed. The coffin's I smaller than the corpse. To place my dear niece in the lower vault. The ground outside is far too marshy this time of year for a proper burial. Marshy. Please light the way. Let's go. Wait, we're going downstairs to the vault. Is that what he said? Yeah, I guess that's why okay. we couldn't go because yeah. it's a story. Hell yeah, let's go. Let's go to that motherfucking vault. I'm ready. I made my descent to the cellar. My companions with their dreadful burden just steps behind. We penetrated into the dank basement. Ooh, penetrated. Lantern pushing back Night, Amanda. Darkness. Night, Amanda. What I could see in the black floated before my eyes. My eyes themselves felt... These harrowing reflections haunted me until we reached the lower vault. We entered carefully and placed the coffin on two spindly wooden trestles set there for such a purpose. Our labor was without ceremony. Come now. Peace be with her. <laughs> I can't bear to leave her here. All alone in the dark. Dear brother, do leave the lantern. Leave her a small source of light. We'll go back in the darkness. Just want to briefly call out uh, Star Spawn's joke that Aegea should change his name to Plaque the Ripper. Uh, amazing. To top tier comedy. Hmm. 
<laughs> Mom says it's my turn on the Xbox. <laughs> Ambers, seal the vault securely. Leave the key with me. Come, gentlemen. Okay, so we're, um, I guess we need to go do the fish, the knife. Yeah. Nope, let's not go back there. I assume you guys got lots more cousins for this dude to creep on. Oh, yeah, I'm sure there's more cousins. Or maybe instead your brother's going to get kidnapped and fo forced to vote multiple times until he <laughs> dies. <laughs> I don't want his money. True. Nervous. Very... Very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why do people say that I am mad? You're mad because you don't have any of this delicious stew. Don't you want some stew? Get the fucking stew, bro. God damn it. Feel like pure shite, just want more stew. <laughs> He's done me no harm. Oh, well, this guy's got boxes full of Pepe. It's the music is a little bit like the Friday the 13th theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How has this idea entered my brain? It haunts me day and night. Yeah, the audio mixing on this is a little fucked. Yeah, it's a little too, uh... Harsh. Oh! Is this anime? Did you draw to this? Did you draw to this? He's here. Give me the soup, old man. <laughs> Give me the fucking soup, old man. You bastard. You look as though you could use some hot soup. Yes. You didn't give me a spoon. I don't need a spoon. I'm an animal. Oh, <laughs> just give me the stew. Fuck. What is it? What is it about him that makes my blood run cold? <gasps> Boink! <laughs> you don't want your soup? It's cooling. I do want the soup. Please! Please give me the soup! <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> is this why you're gonna kill him? <laughs> Mocking me with soup. He's done me no harm. It's grown late. Oh. 
Good night, young man. Good night. You can open the door, but you can't leave. You can check out any time you <laughs> yeah. want, but you can never leave, is what you meant to say, I believe. Uh-huh. didn't get the saw. People fancy me mad. Mad men know nothing but me. I proceed with wisdom. With caution. With foresight. This was the weirdest part of that story. I didn't understand what he meant when he was describing this. What the fuck? <laughs> God damn it. Told you he didn't have the saw. Oh my God, it, it, it fucked up a whole thing we did. Didn't it? Maybe. Son of a bitch. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why do people say that I am mad? Sit there, go to the classes, draw the picture. No harm. Speed run. Me the soup I can eat. You look as though you could use some hot soup. He's done me no harm. You get away, Adam. What is it? Is it about him that makes my blood run cold? <gasps> Boink! You don't want your soup? It's cooling. It's grown late. I love the old man. He's never wronged me.
Good night, young man. Good night. Finish what he's saying. Caution with foresight. With foreskin. Wasn't too bad. A little weird. It's already dark, and it's letting me grab the lantern. Here I am, opening the door little by little, and he doesn't even dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. <laughs> Oh. Poor old man. 
He's been lying awake ever since that first noise. His fears growing, trying to fancy them causeless, but he cannot, because death, stalking with his black shadow before him, has enveloped the victim. Surely it will burst! I will vex me no more. Now, what shall I do with the body? Hey, Tirith, how are you? killing old men. That's how we are. <laughs> it's true. Can I eat the stew now? For the love of God, can I eat the stew? No. Ugh. You just fucking passed through that table. You have to get the saw. You have to eat the stew with the saw. You can do a new drawing? Oh no. no. It just didn't load in. How do I access floorboards? Oh, there's the saw. Ooh. You sucked up all the blood and but in silence. Spit it all out on the saw. Remember the corks. I cut off the head and the arms and the legs. Fair enough, fair enough. Taking my arms, taking my legs. Clean this up very well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. 
Because I feel like that table in the kitchen only has, you know, the stew and the veggies on it. Maybe you gotta use the ladle, pry open the... The floorboards? Uh-huh. The floorboards of the Krusty Krab. Like, it wouldn't let you look down at the floor in that room, right? Or anywhere. I don't think so. Like I'm assuming this will be when you let the police in. Let me go see if I can look at the clock. I don't think so, but... There's something. Oh, there's... That's a broom, actually. Never mind. I think the body parts are in a bag in the middle of the floor. In, in here? here? No, in the bedroom. Oh. Maybe I missed that. Like, it, you looked straight over it when you walk in, so I may have just saw something else. Okay, what's that? Was that there before? No. Yeah. Okay, my bad. I missed this. Why that first floorboard sound like a monkey? <laughs> no, fuck. <laughs> there, all deposited neatly between the scatlings. Replaced so cunningly. No human eye, not even his, could detect anything wrong. Nothing to wash out. No blood spot whatever. All has been caught in a tub. <laughs> what tub? Can't we have some celebratory stew, for God's sake? We didn't boys. <laughs> We're here to debate Sorry Steven's to universe with you. But somebody or other heard a scream or some such. Called us up. We've got to check these things out. What are you doing awake at this hour? That'll do, Finley. It's like daylight outside, guys. You woke me up! <laughs> do come in, please, do. Have some motherfucking stew. Well, what about the scream, Sarge? Oh, <laughs> the screams, huh? What do you know about anything like that? Oh, that was I, Sergeant. I called out in a nightmare. I'm given to nervous fits. A gentle man like yourself? Well, what about the old man that lives here? Finley! Gone to the country. Lucky man. Can that dude see your hand? Yeah. <laughs> Might we be looking about a bit? Of <laughs> I know my rights, you go need a warrant so. for that. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Check over there. The stove as well. Yes, sir. Sir. Never mind that. Stay out of there. You'll want especially to look into the old man's room. Yes, look particularly here. <coughs> In here, boys. Watch it. Sorry. Sorry. Sit, sit. All of you, do. Don't mind if I do. Been a long day. Of course, they don't suspect me. My manner has assuaged them. Indeed, they are delightful fellows. 
He keeps his treasure in that drawer there. Oh, it's a lovely night, though. The stars are out in all their glory. Hasn't been disturbed, sir. Well, everything seems to be in order. Don't go. No, stay. Stay a moment. Rest yourselves from your various fatigues. We have so much stew. Please take some. Oh, my head. And what is that annoying ringing in my ears? Will they never be gone? And that ringing... But wait. It's not in my ears, it's... Oh my God! Can't they hear it? No. I'm safe. If only they'll leave. They must hear it. They must. And still. How is it they don't hear it? They hear. They suspect. They know. They're mocking me. Villains. Cruel villains. Boink. Stop. Stop. I admit it. I confess. Tear up the planks. Here. Here. <sighs> As much as I don't want to play as a cop, I would love to see this from a cop's perspective. <laughs> Just you walk in, this dude's totally fucking normal, then <laughs> last minute he starts screaming and tearing the floorboards in his house up. <laughs> that one was really good. Like, it was very cinematic at the end. I liked uh -huh. that a lot. Hey, Devin. How are you? I mean, I wish Valdemar had been in this one, because then you would have had a melted corpse. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. I love that story. It's really fucking cool. <laughs> so, I think... So, did we lose the last half of Berenice? God, I think we did, and it took forever. Can you show them to me again? Show you what? Those things. These? Yeah, because that's the Mask of Red Death. That's the Telltale Heart. What's this one? Um, it's the other half of the Telltale Heart, maybe? Okay. So, Telltale Heart, Telltale Heart, uh... Bernice, Bernice. And then those two are the cask of, of Amontillado. Amontillado, 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 Annabelle Lee, and Mask of the Red Death. Okay. We just have to figure out how to walk in this one. <laughs> also, we have to have another... Yeah, there's gotta be another whatever. story segment. Oh, we didn't do this yet. Oh. I have determined to place my dear niece in the lower vault. Will you do this the part? I'm going to use the bathroom. <laughs> like, we're so close to finishing, I just want to get it finished. Please light the way. Alright, I have not navigated at all, so... Let's see how badly I do. You're telling me I can... Okay. There we go. Uh, I made my uh, descent to the cellar. Okay. My companions with their dreadful burden just steps behind. We penetrated into the dank basement, the lantern pushing back the darkness. Yeah. What I could see in the black floated before my eyes. My eyes themselves felt as though they had turned to ice. 
and now sat chill and spiked in my heavy skull. Yeah, I think we skipped half of that the first time we came through here. Like, we just went through a little fast. These harrowing reflections haunted me until we reached the lower vault. We entered carefully and placed the coffin on two spindly wooden trestles set there for such a purpose. Our labor was without ceremony. Come now. Peace be with her. I can't bear to leave her here. All alone in the dark. Dear brother, do leave the lantern. Leave her a small source of light. We'll go back in the darkness. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Thank you. Ambers, seal the vault securely. Leave the key with me. Come, gentlemen. I've been trying to figure out what this puppet reminds me of, and it reminds me of... One of those balcony dudes from, from the Muppets. From the Muppets. Yeah. Something in Waldorf. I can't remember their names. <laughs> okay, so you have Berenice and you have Fortunato. The Casket of Montiato, yeah. yeah. We just gotta hope this one works right. Yeah, like, I'll go find what, uh, Starfield Yeah, was yeah, he, he said what, the, like, the, the, the actions you had to take to complete it as, uh, Fortunato, so. I mean, you're gonna do all this shit again, aren't you? Because you probably can't do it until you've done this. Yeah. So I wonder if the that agreements is... agreements are in place. Tomorrow is the day... Chiano, how I've waited for this moment. We'll be rich beyond imagination. You wonder what? If that's part of the problem is there was just some weird one thing you hadn't done. Oh, I'm sure it was. Because, <laughs> I mean, all they posted, or all they posted was, was the wine. directions a lovely to get off the bridge. But I feel like if it was barring you from getting off the bridge, then you maybe didn't finish it. I don't know. Young. Straightforward, rather blunt, drinkable. <laughs> Look at that fellow, haunting the shoreline. Chilling. What are you laughing about? <laughs> I was laughing because I was trying to make a Batman joke, but then all I could think about was the part in Dark Knight Rises when he's basically telling Gordon who he is. So he's doing his Batman voice going, Sometimes, I want to to be a hero. He's a pretty good Or a little boy shoulders. <laughs> oh my god. I love Christian Bale's Batman voice. It's so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, it won't play that clip the first time, but then when you come back, it does it. Oh, we get to see this lady's bare ass again, though. Good. Signore Fortunato, I've been waiting for you to call on me at my villa. I've been waiting for your husband to leave town. Shame on you. <laughs> I love all of the voices in those Batman movies. <laughs> like, they're just ridiculous. I'd wait till she could scratch on the storm. Nothing like a few welts to remind one of a night of passion. Passion! <laughs> <laughs> I 
So how do you get off the bridge? This says, turn left again and walk towards your friend, which I'm assuming is this dude in black. Yeah. Turn left and approach the lady in gold, then turn right. Okay. Uh, and walk down the street. Okay, turn right and go forward. <laughs> but you don't get off the bridge. Like, that's the thing. It says, you know, turn right and go forward. And walk down the street. But, like, it just doesn't put you down on the street. And I, I can't understand why. Get, we never did this part this time, so let's try again. Look up from the water and read the man standing on the shore, which we did. Uh -huh. Turn left and read your friend, then click on him. Turn and approach the bald man, then read him. Turn right to the lady with the purple mask, then turn and approach the lady in gold and read her. Turn away from her, then turn back and read her again. We did that. Walk further back along the bridge and approach the lady with the purple mask again. Purple mask again. Turn left and point to the man across the water. Looks a, a bit like Montresor. Whatever became of him? Uh, didn't you two have some dealings? I suppose we did. Bit of a wet blanket, Montresor. I think that's what we were missing. I guess so. So maybe now we can leave the cursed bridge. Rich. Rich. Good talk. We're free. Oh my god, finally. Yeah, it said you're supposed to see a beggar on the street. Yeah, this guy. When will they clear the streets of these scoundrels? They should be chained up. Get it? Ah, uh, it's funny. It's foreshortening. <laughs> oh, <that>? Foreskinning. <laughs> oh, so it's you. Fortunato. What a surprise. <laughs> it's a lovely party, isn't it? My celebration has just begun. My dear Fortunato, I wonder if you could help me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I have wine. Would you like wine? Thanks for doing the audio work there. <laughs> it's a whiny wine. <laughs> oh, man, it cut out a lot there for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why now. Like, it makes even less sense that it works now. Bah. Oh, Casey can't tell a Monty you don't forget her water. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. It's just some of these audio clips are not functioning. A cask of a Monty must have been cheated. It's unheard of. Some of the video clips need a certain version of QuickTime, and then some need a different version of QuickTime. Yeah, you are that sounds. With a severe cold. The vaults are insufferably damp. They are encrusted with nitre. 
Let us return. I'll consult Lucchese. The cold is nothing. Lucchese is an ignoramus. Is, are these creepy faces on the Yeah, I don't gate? know what those are. Look at the... yeah. This is my coat of arms. What does it mean? No one harms me with impunity. Most unusual. Speed run to get fucking encased. <laughs> Oh, yeah? <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, last time Star Spawn explained that the dude is supposed to say, Oh, I am a Mason, and then he waves the trowel at you. Yeah. So, I, like, all the other ones seem to be fine. I don't know why this one has so much drop dialogue. Because we thought it was that, you know, you didn't have the right version of QuickTime or whatever, so it couldn't play those smoother motion clips, which we assumed was where the dialogue was, but now it's playing the video, but not the audio. Yeah, I don't. But it's only doing it with this story, as far as we can tell. Therein lies the Amontillado. Who's your torch there? What's this? It is very damp here. One last time, let me implore you to return. No? Well, then I must leave you. But first... We got to hear that again. Uh huh. <laughs> joke. An excellent joke. We'll have many laughs about it at the Palazzo over some time. The Amontillado. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Amontillado. The Amontillado. The fucking Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> it's getting late. My, my wife will be looking for me. Let us be gone. Yes, let us be gone. Oh yeah, he does throw the torch in. I just like that. I just like the idea of, like, this dude, like, chained up in this little room, and, like, the last thing you do is fucking throw a fire in and at him. Tomorrow is the day. 
day. We'll be rich beyond imagination. My husband will be away all next week. <laughs> what the what? fuck? I don't know. <laughs> the story's over. What are we still doing here? Dying. Papa. I'd be glad to get away from that. I'm honestly not sure that I've read the Cask of Amontillado. Oh, really? Yeah, like, it's one of those that I, I, you know, you know what it's about. Right, right. Okay, so, yeah, let's look now. We should only have one space left, yeah. Fuck, I keep doing that. Okay. Uh, so now let's go check on the family, and then we can finish Bernice, and that should probably be the end of the game, I'm assuming. Oh, I can't escape this room. Here we go. You just stretch your big, long, tall legs over that table. Alright. Free bedroom. Henry's room. Oh, Devin says he's never read it and he doesn't know what it's about. I would highly recommend reading The Cask of Amontillado. I don't think anything by Poe is super long, except, uh, you know, there's... Next, I mean, the, the case of Invaldemar is pretty long, right? Yeah, but it's still not that long. But, like, uh, the one. What is the fucking one? The gold bug? No. Um, the murders in the room Yes, morgue? yes. <laughs> like, the one with the fucking ape. <laughs> like, the murders in the room morgue is like a novella, and I want to say the gold bug is a novella. Got any painting here? Is he down in the basement? They're probably both down there fucking that body or something. Who knows? These weird ass nineteenth century gothic freaks. <laughs> yeah, the butler's not here, so The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Penn, that's another long one, yeah, you're right. How many completed collections of Edgar Allan Poe do we own? Do we own? I own five or six. Because I know we have that big, I don't know if it was the Barnes & Noble one. Yeah, I've got one of those leather bound ones. And you bought me one when we were in high school that's like this really nice edition, of but two, it's divided into two, three or four books. It's two volumes, yeah. And then I've got an old, um, like 1960s hardback collection i don't know like if you like speculative fiction you just sort of accumulate um edgar Allan poe vault, uh collections well i mean how many copies of alice in wonderland do you have oh uh, <laughs> 10 or so i think i'm sure that there is an alice in wonderland point and click somewhere i know there's one um uh, try this room behind you, the open room that's all destroyed. Oh, uh, we might need to go upstairs. There's been nothing up there thus far. 
There's not really room for anything. It's just these windows. Yeah. I know that there's an Alice in Wonderland, like, museum kind of thing. Like, it's like a virtual museum. So I don't really know if it's much of an adventure or just sort of a digital novelty. Where did you say to go? The destroyed yeah. room. I'm sorry, I can't figure out the parameters to get over there at the moment. Am I stupid? Don't answer that. Uh, yeah, uh... Oh yeah, here they are. Or here he is. She's alive. Oh yeah? I know it. I can feel her blood flowing through the house. Oh shit. I hear her whisper. I hear her very heart. Shh. <laughs> Shh. I've pounded at the door to her vault. I swear, I hear rustling within. Do you understand? She lives. I really like playing, uh... Like, I love having choices in games, but I also find it really funny when you play, like, voiceless, directionless characters. Your brother has lost his sanity. Not even Ambers can restrain him. I understand you carried messages between Elise and him. Then come, carry one more. Sorry, finish that thought. Because it's like you're the most suggestible idiot on earth. Yeah, <laughs> just do whatever. It's like, help me marry my cousin. Okay, help me dig up my cousin's dead body. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, that's like any RPG, though, because it's like fucking go into my basement and murder giant dog-sized rats. Uh -huh. is of an exceedingly sensitive nature. That Here's... makes sense, though. When such a man succumbs to delusions, it's best to bring him slowly around by way of that same delusion. He believes at least to be alive. Let him receive a letter from her. <laughs> Deliver I... him this message. <laughs> Let him believe it to be from Elise. My daughter is... Let him read by her own hand that <laughs> she is no more. My daughter is dead, so I've written this erotic letter from my dead daughter to her cousin, your brother. <laughs> Uncle, what is an asshole? <laughs> what? <laughs> I just feel like there would be a lot of asshole in this, and I don't know that that term existed. Uh, my dearest, dearest Henry, you alone have left my lingering presence in this house. I must see you. Please, please meet me on the path below the cliff just after dark. Please, my love, Elise. Like, I guess he went downstairs, right? That would make sense. Or I guess this is what he means by her tomb, so I guess that's the sealed door, actually. Yeah. My bad. Because the uncle's the only one who's supposed to have the key. I'm going to have to get versions of the point-and-click adventures I played when I was a kid. So there's like... Uh, it's probably just in his room, I guess. Yeah, probably. Or he could be in the fish room. Or the piano room. Yeah. Oh, he's just on the landing. <laughs> you must help me. Must I? <laughs> help you get pushed off a cliff. After dusk. It's after dusk now. Oh shit. But yeah, when I was a kid I played the uh there's a Dracula point and click, which I can't remember the name, like the full name of. Uh 
There's a Frankenstein point and click with Tim Curry as Dr. Frankenstein that I remember playing. I tried to follow, but my haste made me clumsy. Finally, I emerged into the night. Please. Please. Elise, it's Henry. Elise, are you there? In, in the distance, I could hear my brother crying out. Elise, are you there? Elise! Elise, answer me! In the bright moonlight, I could see the rise and swell of the ocean from afar. The wave collected itself into a vast wall of destruction, then, then seemed to hesitate poised in the moonlight. Then, with a terrific crash, the full force of the sea met the cliff face, shattering the calm of the night, surely forever. Oh, shit. He gone. Miraculously, Henry had escaped. Oh, okay. Never mind. He lay panting on the cliff edge, then rose to survey the scene of his near demise. As I watched him, I... Saw a second silhouette emerge from the brush behind. The water washed all of his features off. The name I dared not utter. Elise? But it was not Elise. Certainty. Your brother was driven to insanity by breathing paint fumes from a lantern. You carried messages for them. You sang and flirted with her. You tried to save him. All right, so we got to do Bernice now. That's his office. Yeah, right? his office with the knife. Uh, Star Spawn is asking if I ever played D. I don't. That, that's one. That one's not familiar. Should I look into that? D's nuts. D's nuts. You're right. For fuck's sake! Oh god, did it crash windows entirely? Wow. This is the second time that's happened, Devin. Son of a bitch. Oh, I'm gonna have to remount windows now. Hang on. This will take me a second. Okay, we didn't lose that one, though, that we just completed. We may have to watch that scene again. Yeah, it looks like it. So, can you open the door? No, I think I'm gonna have to go... Probably gonna have to go back upstairs and talk to... Well, you don't have the letter in your hand. You probably have to go talk to Shit, yeah. Edwin first. Uh, but I also played... Oh, yeah, didn't you have a mummy one? Yeah, I had one called The Riddle of the Sphinx, which I played a lot of, that was set in Egypt. Is I'm he sorry, not where... in his office? I don't... No, I just went into his office. He wasn't there. You went into the studio. You didn't go into the office, I thought. I'm so sure I did, but I might, maybe I didn't. 
Yeah, see, he's not there. Okay. I think I have to go talk to Henry still. Or, I yeah. I can't remember. Uh, and then I, I'm fairly sure I played Mist at some point. Cause like, yeah, he's in that ruined room. That's just one that you play, you know? And I also had one that I, I think, like, my computer wouldn't run for some reason. Called the Crystal Key. She's alive. That was very mist-like. I can feel her blood flowing through the house. I hear her whisper. I hear her very heart. Whisper. I've pounded at the door to her vault. I swear, I hear rustling within. Rustling. Do you understand? She lives. But yeah, point and click adventures are very chill, so it'd be kind of a cool thing to do sometimes. Your brother has lost his sanity. Not even Ambers can restrain him. I understand you carried messages between Elise and him. Then come, carry one more. What is he saying? Not even what can restrain him? I have no idea. Henry is of an exceedingly sensitive nature. When such a man succumbs to delusions, it's best to bring him slowly around by way of that same delusion. He believes at least to be alive. Let him receive a letter from her. Deliver him this message. Let him believe it to be from Elise. Let him read by her own hand that she is no more. You must help me. After dusk. It's after dusk now. I tried to follow, but... My haste made me clumsy. Finally, I emerged into the night. Please. Please. You couldn't skip cutscenes back in the day. <laughs> like, I'm afraid to try to skip it because oh, yeah, I don't want I it to crash. I could hear my brother crying out. Police under there! Police! Police answer me! In the bright moonlight, I could see the rise and swell of the ocean from afar. The wave collected itself into a vast wall of destruction. I feel like there are some it newer, like, point-and-click puzzle-solving games. The crash, the full force of the sea met the cliff There's base, one that's, like, on PS4 and forever. Steam and everything that I always see. You know what I'm talking about? It's, like, a really bright, colorful puzzle game. Miraculously, I think of it all. Escaped. Off he lay panting on the cliff edge, then rose to survey the scene of his near demise. As I watched him, I saw a second silhouette emerge from the I feel like we watched behind, somebody play a horror and returned point and click. pronounced the name I dared not utter. Elise? You're talking about Harvester? No, not Harvester. But like, it was, it was a, a newer Elise. looking one. Because it was like, it was illustrated. It wasn't FMV. There's Franbo. No, it's not that stylized. I can't remember who played it. I have to go back and look. Like, it's been a while since we watched it. Okay. And it may not have been quite as point and click as I'm picturing it. Yeah. It may have just been like a fairly low interaction indie sort of game. My wrath falls with certainty. 
Your brother was driven to insanity by breathing paint fumes. This looks like an Lennon. album cover. Yeah. You carried messages for them. You sang and flirted with her. You tried to save him. Okay. Like, I'm just not sure what made it crash, you know? Like, is there a way to save? Not really. I was hoping, like, leaving and then coming back like this would do some kind of saving aspect. Uh, where am I going? The Ups office. The office to get the knife, yeah. To bully Dwight. Exactly. It was like, he just did this, and it was like, no. Actually, fuck you. Uh, so now you just gotta walk in circles around this room until it decides to fucking... Yeah. Teeth. If you wanna... We get to watch Teeth again. Teeth. <laughs> if you wanna read me the walkthrough, you can. Here, here it is on my phone. Look down at the desk and pick up the pen to start writing the letter. Done. Look away and open the middle drawer. As she falls into another of her trances. She emerges ever Be careful more about and ever less the happy cousin I remember from my age. Each is look after Berenice. Like yeah, it, it seems like when the dialogue is overlapping or you cut some off is when we get the crashes, yeah. so try not to rush too much. Uh, then read the pendant that you see. Turn right twice and read the portrait of Berenice with a red vest. She's almost gone. Okay. Uh, turn right and walk forward once to the fireplace. Okay. Then turn left and read the portrait of your father. Young man, our lineage Young man. <laughs> stood honorably for centuries. Young man, there's no need to feel down. I said, young man, there are teeth in the ground. Uh, look down and read the fire. Her steady decline. Okay. Turn right and approach the corner of the room. Then look down and read the Poynton family history. I will muse. For long unwearied hours, with my attention riveted to some frivolous device in the margin of a book. Okay. Turn right and go across to another corner of the room, reading the top left of the three paintings. Berenice. Okay. Turn right and move forward, then turn left and read the window. Never less the happy cousin I remember from my life. Huh. It's like you're a GPS. <laughs> <laughs> now what? <laughs> Shit. Uh, return to the desk and pick up the pen. Recalculating. <laughs> Recalculating. 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 Fuck. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Rerouting. The, the letter again. Pick up the pen and finish the letter. Burden with all these cares, but they occupy all my waking thoughts. Okay. Mm, read the images. Yours. Wait, shit. When you need, when you near, when you near a knock on the door is what this says. But it's when you hear a, doc, a knock on the door. When you're knock knock knocking on heaven's door, look up Come in. at the sky. Cousin. And then you read those images that pop up room. out of her. Come with me for a stroll. <laughs> then click on her to propose. <laughs> Even in the days of her beauty, I never loved her. Yet she has loved me long. And <laughs> hard yes. through my jorts. <laughs> Are you alright? <laughs> Her eyes have grown lusterless. Even in the days of her beauty, I never loved her. Yet she has loved me. 
Yeah, it doesn't play the dialogue here. Yeah, because like we're proposing right now, but it's not playing that dialogue. And then for some she reason. gets super happy and faint. And then she yeah, she <laughs> as women are wont to do. It's true. Y'all be fainting all the time back in well, the I've day. Well, I've never been happy, so. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Depression keeps me from fainting. Yeah. We did Help get someone. Faint F S F X. No, I'm all right. It's past. Cool, miss, you've taken another of your turns. Okay, it says turn around and read the fan on the table next to the armchair. Do hentai uh, dating sims count as point and click adventures? Another dating sims. Turn right and read what now? The fan. Another of her trances. Read the desert painting from the painting groups or group. Ever less the happy cousin I remember from my youth. And then read the window again. Her eyes have grown lusterless. It says turn around. Her steady decline. Okay. Walk forward, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it does that thing. Yeah. Uh, go forward to see a flickering image. Yeah. Uh, of yourself in the armchair. Oh. I guess you need to turn. Yeah, there we, okay. there we go. Then turn again and approach the group of three paintings. All will show Berenice. Young man, our lineage has stood honorably for centuries. Okay, we got that. Go and look out the window next to the desk. Okay. The day of our nuptials approaches. Approaches. Okay. Go to the desk and read the letter. Well, I guess I didn't realize before that these are teeth. I thought they were like cuneiform or something. <laughs> Uh, then turn around and read that portrait of her twice. See, this is what held me up for so long before. Quickly, young man. She's almost gone. Quickly, young man. Okay. Uh, go to the middle of the room, and then that's She's when you get the knock at the door. Gone. You know, like, if it's not here, but here... Come in? Yeah. <laughs> Read her teeth, it says. <laughs> After her face yes. gets close up. Yes. The day is soon upon us. Ah! <laughs> Read the teeth. I'm trying. Okay. Teeth. 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 Now they're looking at all the teeth. The the red vest teeth. The fireplace teeth. Teeth. Look <laughs> for you go around and face up all of these paintings. Teeth. Uh the statue teeth. The portrait with the severed head, then the bust. Uh, then the window. I don't 
think we got that one last time. No, we did. Oh. Teeth. It is only by way of the teeth that I can restore myself to peace and to reason. And go to your door. Do a fanciful bit of grave robbing. <laughs> we don't get this dialogue it now. It played before, so yeah. I wonder... I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. It's just having a lot of trouble. This, this voice actress is really hamming it up with this character, though. I'll just let you know. <laughs> true. True. Boink. Back at your desk, look at the book. Look up at the sky. Because it says pick up the book, then try to pick up the box. And then look at the book again. I thought she had a cell phone in her hand for a second. <laughs> Terrible, sir. Her enshrouded body. Bloody, yet still breathing. Oh, yes. Alive. Oh, sir. Look. Oh, sir. What's this? Ooh. That's my doo doo shovel. That's what a shovel doo doo with. Teeth. 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 Sexy, sexy teeth. Pearly white chompers. Yeah, I really don't believe her teeth would even be that clean. Oh no. Or that many. <laughs> oh. Now we down here. No pestilence has ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood is its avatar and its seal. The redness and the horror of blood. What? Oh, you're Berenice again. For me, the celebration has just begun. What if we were trapped on the bridge? <laughs> oh, cool. Minecraft. Minecraft. <laughs> Minecraft, the point and click adventure. Oh, hell yeah. What up? Oh, her dialogue's not working. full import of the lantern, the madness-inducing fumes, Henry's premonitions, all these came clear to me at once, and I could feel and hear a great rending, as of a mirror breaking, roll throughout the house, growing in volume and strength, and even as I looked on, the house around us, the vault, the lantern, Elise, her bloody eyes, all shattered. 
shattered into a hundred thousand shards, shattered as did the dark depths of my very soul. New game plus. New game plus. For the wild narrative which I'm about to We get to, to tell, play as William S. Burroughs now. Yeah. All right. So that would be mad to took like an hour longer than I thought it might, but evidence. we got and through it. Mad. Star Spawn, I am and so very uh, thankful for you hanging out with us that entire time and for recommending this game to begin with, because that was really fucking cool. Are these mozzarella? These? Yes. yes, these are little little pads of mozzarella that have washed up on the bank of this lake. Snack. <laughs> Snacks. Um, so let's exit. Uh, so, uh, that was the Dark Eye from, uh, God, what's the name of the company? Oh, yeah. Just saw you say it. Uh, Inscape. It's called Inscape. So they also did a, uh, a, a a game called. Will you turn this audio down a little bit? That's not okay. Uh, they did a game called Devo Presents Adventure of the Smart Patrol, which is like a game with the band Devo in it. Uh, and they also did Bad Day on the Midway, which is an adventure game. That was designed and scored by the residents. The ex huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. But by, by the experimental band, the residents. So I feel like that's one we should definitely check out someday. That's like one of my <laughs> favorite bands. Star Spawn said, "Do not play that." Which one? Bad Day on the Midway, I guess. I don't know. Oh, the Devo game. The Devo game looked fucking terrible. So I was not planning on playing that. I don't even like Devo really. So that wouldn't be worth it for me. Um, then they also have a game called The Drowned God, which sounded kind of cool. So, Bad Day on the Midway and The Drowned God might be games that I check out in the future. But, uh, next, next week, next Tuesday, I'm going to... Tuesday, as they say in, in England. Um, <laughs> I'm going to play uh, uh, World of Horror, which is like a... a turn-based roguelite uh, game. It's like a random turn-based horror game in, uh, inspired by like uh, Apple II graphics and uh, Junji Ito and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. World of Horror is out, I believe. Um, I know it's at least out on PC. Because uh, I played a demo like a long while back, but I, I believe it's been released. Uh, yeah, you know, I know it's released because I bought it, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to play that next week, um, which I, I, I don't think has like a beginning and an end or anything. It's just like a random thing. So uh, I don't know if it's come to PlayStation yet. Uh, I know it's supposed to come to like PlayStation and Switch and stuff like that. But I just want to like run through that for an hour or two. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm thinking about playing Resident Evil Seven, uh, so that I can then play Resident Evil Eight when it comes out. But I don't know. So I will see you guys tomorrow if you're able to. If anybody's able to make it, we're gonna do more Final Fantasy, which we're close to beating, and Dragon Warrior Monsters. But that'll be all for tonight. Yeah. Good night. night see night. you guys.